Welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. We're ready for another lesson in this project pack. I'm Molly. I'm Martha. And this is part of Project Pack 04. Project Pack 04 is designed around a specific project we are calling the Zentangle Spinner. We are using our annual 12 Days of Zentangle series to share 12 consecutive days of lessons with you to guide you along in filling this spinner with tangles. Today is our 12th day in the series. I can't believe we've made it this far. But if you are watching these after the day they are posted, you can easily do these lessons in any order. So today we're going to guide you through filling one of these wedges on your spinner with some tangles. And we're going to begin with um, one of my um, sort of go-to tangles in a lot of my um, Zentangle artworks is tipple. And tipple is a really basic, simple tangle, but it um, is a beautiful texture and can offer so much in a, in a work. So we use it very often. And tipple is really all about orbs. And in Zentangle, we often refer to circular shapes as orbs because we like to embrace the fact that they're not quite so perfect. Um, and an orb sort of lends that a little bit more. So I'm going to work in one of these sort of inner spaces here, and I'm going to begin in the middle by drawing a simple orb, maybe about the size of a pearl, and then I'm going to continue to smush orbs around that first one I drew, maybe getting a little bit smaller in this next row, but just kind of smushing them all together. And just continuing to layer orbs, maybe varying the sizes a little bit. And just taking your time with each one. I like to fully create my orb. I don't want to do them too quickly. I want to make sure my circle is fully enclosed and thoughtful. And just taking my time, filling every little space. Not rushing, not a race. I love how you can really get into the rhythm of those orbs, just over and over the same stroke. And I'm really using each sort of orb as a, a marker to put the next one. It's really trying to fill each space. Tipple is such a great texture, shades so beautifully. I think it's often the simpler tangles that we find this interesting complexity in. Use tipple inside other tangles. And then once I get all my orbs in there, I might go in and sort of fill some of the little spaces in between. There, I think that's pretty good. You ready for the next space? I'm ready. So moving right along to this next shape here that we're going to fill in, I'm going to do a tangle called zinger. And I always think of zinger as sort of an exclamation point that you can add to any of your artwork. And I'm going to just work from this corner here and add a few of these um, zingers, if you will. Um, I think there's a few ways to do it. I'm going to I'm going to use a double line for my stem of my zinger. Gently auraing the stem. And just put a little hat on it at the top. It's sort of reminiscent of, of um, poke root here as we get started. I'm going to give myself a, a nice wide base to work on and then the zingers have this fun way of 
pointing in any direction that you intend it to. So here's a basic zinger for you. Um, I think I'll just have them organically growing out of the corner here, almost like a wild weed. Can I cap it? Maybe one will weave its way through the other direction. Turning my spinner. I love zingers. They're so playful and fun. I feel like they add this like animated bit to your work. Definitely animated. And I feel like everybody's zingers look really different. I like that whenever I see different people using it. They have a different personality. That's nice too because you got a little bit of white space there to play with. I think that's mm -hmm. good to contrast the other spaces. I just got a baby one. Hmm. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, oh, sweet. I think I'm going to leave it that way. All right, so we're making our way down this wedge of our spinner here. I'm going to do a border tangle here that we call Vega. Um, I like this tangle, actually. I forget about it sometimes. And this is one of those tangles you may want to watch me do first and then um, follow along after you see how everything plays out because it might make more sense that way. So Vega is going to have these bands that I'm going to work going in one direction, and then I'm going to go back and, and put them in the other direction. So what I'm going to do is sort of create a band stretching diagonally across um, this space of my border here. And I'm going to draw another one. And the way I know where to start my other one is to sort of horizontally go across um, where this one left off. So the next one's going to go here. I do the same thing, kind of horizontally go across. It's just a simple way to sort of measure things out. And then I'm going to do them going in the other direction, like so. But this time they're going to fall behind the previously drawn one. And again, I want them to sort of meet up with that other one. So I'll sort of start like that. you'll kind of get the flow for it after you do it a few times. So you sort of have this like ribboning, twining thing going on. So that's sort of our basic Vega. And now I'm going to add a little detail here just to make it a little more interesting. I'm going to sort of aura all of these triangular spaces. And in the inside, there'll be squares. And then I'm just going to simply fill in all those spaces. Anytime you have a tangle that offers an opportunity to add a little ink, I highly suggest it because it just makes that tangle pop. If you do add a lot of ink, especially on this Tiepolo paper, I do recommend um, giving it plenty of time to, to dry because before you add any graphite, because it can 
actually stay a little damp for a while. So when you're ready, I'm going to attack one of these remaining square spaces at the bottom here. It doesn't, um, doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to do a tangle called Vertigo. It's one of my favorites. And I'm going to start out um, in this bottom corner and draw, just draw a gentle arcing branch, if you will, right there. And um, we're, no, we're working small in this little space here. So we'll start with these needles um, building up our branch here. And I like to go back and forth when I am drawing this tangle. So I'll start on this side and I, I want you to watch how I'm using the pressure of my pen, sort of heavier on the tip. And it's going to add this really interesting sort of depth to our branch of needles, and you'll see it evolve um, as we work our way up and down. So I usually start going back and forth, and then I'll start filling in, drawing needles behind the ones that are already there. It's amazing how just a little pressure playing around with that can make such a difference. So now I'm going to begin to draw the needles behind the ones that are already there. Vertigo, too, can take on so many different sort of organic personalities just by the slightly changing the shape of the needles. But it's the same formula of just adding them all in one direction and then in another. And it creates this sort of like impression of it being very random and erratic and sort of tangled. But in reality, it was sort of this very rhythmic process. I guess like so many other tangles, each of us has our own way of doing it. Sometimes we draw fat, robust needles. Sometimes they're skinny little needles. That's why this project pack is so fun because we're sort of revisiting some of these old tangles and realizing that we all kind of have a unique way of, of drawing them, which is so great. And so we offer them to you in this sort of particular way, but we, we know that eventually you'll come up with your own way, your own flair. It's fun watching this branch fill with luscious needles. So I'm gonna add, I might add one more branch just a small little bow coming off the top and uh, enjoy how they play off one another. Again, always drawing behind what's already there. Sometimes I like to calf up Cap off the uh, bottom of my branch as if. Very pretty. Here, show them, Martha. Okay, one last space here. Um, we're gonna finish off with a tangle called Rixty. Uh, Rixty was a tangle that um, my mom gifted to Ricky on his 60th birthday. That's what we do around here. We give each other tangles. Um, so. I think Martha came up with that name, right? It was definitely me. Yeah, it's definitely you. <laughs> um, so Rick on Rick turning 60 equals Rick's D. Great name, I think. 
And uh, Rixie is this fun sort of organic tangle, but it reminds me of maybe a plant that would grow on another planet because it's just a little bit odd. It's it's a bit. So here's how it goes. Unpredictable. <laughs> so sort of like when you start poke root, we're going to start with a little stem. And you can just watch me for a minute here. And then I'm going to cap it off with a kind of straighter line here. And at the end of these little lines, I'm going to just draw down to the stem to create sort of these triangular spaces. And I'm going to ink those in. Taking your time. And then I'm going to simply aura that. And you have this kind of weird looking leaf or something like that. Now I'm going to show you splitting Rixtes, which means this stem, which is going to go straight through here, is going to split. If you were doing regular Rixte, I guess you could just do the stem to continue on. But I'm going to pretend that this stem right here is splitting. And I'm going to go like so. I'm going to cap this one off, do my little triangular shapes, and I'm going to aura that create that sort of funky shape. Cap this one, create my little triangles. And then aura. Kind of fun, right? So I'm gonna continue to split. Just kind of allows you to sort of play with a more like bush-like or tree-like thing going on. And you can start to sort of have them grow behind one another. I kind of like it when they get tangled up. And you can add a different flair to yours. We have a great newsletter if you want to archive our newsletters when we introduce this tangle that has all these different variations of Rixtes. I highly recommend that. It's been a fun project here. You guys probably have, we're working on a, a blank spinner this time. We wanted to offer that as an option. Maybe yours has got some color added to it. And if you were working in order, you're probably just about done, which is probably kind of exciting. So we put our finishing touches on here. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I like how they're sort just of enjoying how going that's... right underneath the edge. They look great. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll do something with this. Put a little cap on that one if you want. I am going to add some graphite to my my tipple here. <laughs> that was actually really funny. And um, I love to shade this tangle. And uh, I'm just gonna add. A really dark line around the edges and leave the center sort of untouched and I think it'll create a, a nice illusion. I'm going pretty heavy-handed here. It's sort of my style though. I don't know I think this is a fun one to to kind of go out of your comfort zone and add more graphite than you're used to because this one really uh, benefits from that contrast totally. that the shading offers. I even find myself going back sometimes and adding more. Just making sure to leave that center part nice and stark so you can get that, that effect of it being kind of dropping back. It's nice. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to shade all the ones I did first, and then I'll let Martha come in. And Let's see. On the Vega, I think I'll be vague. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to add a little graphite where these overlap. Doesn't need much, does it? No, I don't think so. You have that nice ink in there. So I'm just going to kind of create some shadow, maybe a little bit on one side here. See what that looks like.
just hitting it with the tortillon to soften the shades a little bit. Okay, well that's pretty cool. And then with the Rixty, I am going to, I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm going to actually shade just the background a little bit, just because I wanted to try that. So I'm gonna kind of shade around. It'll take a little bit longer than, but I like to take opportunities when I see them. And that looked like that might be a little interesting, adding a new tone and just trying to play with it, the contrast of it. So you always wanna think, okay, well, if I can make the most of this graphite, I need to have no graphite somewhere. So that's the only thing really that you wanna play with. Kind of model it a little bit. So that's fun. So this might be an option for you. Might You might be like, I'm gonna do something a little little different. I'm just gonna put in some, cast some shadows here, play with the the way the Rixties kind of weave a little bit, and that's fine too. Just kind of taking a stab at something different. Yeah, and it's kind of contrasting to the other stuff there too. So I like that. So Zinger itself doesn't really need a whole lot of shading, but perhaps maybe we'll just I'm gonna find that first one I did and, and just add a little bit of graphite uh, with the nice sharp point of my pencil along along the side. I'll have to show you how that first one looks. It's kind of spread it under there and then maybe I'll just add it along the right side of all of these there that's kind of fun and the vertigo I I think I just like uh, going back and reinforcing that original branch that we put down as our guide And then letting those needles speak for themselves, I think. Very cool. So you all might have a completely filled spinner at this point, and if so, congratulations, because that's a lot of work, um, and I'm sure they're beautiful. And in your project pack, you have another spinner, so you may create another one with all your favorite tangles, or maybe um, a collection of tangles that you're inspired by and want to um, have all together. So um, I highly recommend doing it with a friend. It's been really fun. Yeah, Molly and I have had a great thing. time doing this together. Um, and you might enjoy the same with a good friend or a sister. Right. And tomorrow, um, or in the next video, Mom and Rick will offer some fun and playful ways to use your sp your finished spinner. So stay tuned. We hope you have a good time with it, and thanks for joining us. Bye.